Hey there, everybody. We're back for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And this time it's episode 91. We're closing in on 100. And today we're going to talk about that classic martial arts movie, Billy Jack. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you didn't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and excellent apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you that are listening again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more or buy over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are on a different site, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Now, from either site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and you really should, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. So let's talk about the movie Billy Jack. The film's come up a lot on the show. We've had guests mention it as their favorite or one of their favorite martial arts films, and it really has an interesting place in the martial arts film landscape, because at the time it was filmed, and we're going to talk about a lot of these details as we go through today, there wasn't anything like it. It wasn't someone from China or from Japan starring in the movie doing martial arts. And if we look at the movies through the 70s, that's really all we had. That's where Bruce Lee came into popularity. There was some credibility there because in America, people saw the martial arts as being in Asian pursuit. And so to have someone even on the forefront of that time period who was not Asian starring in a movie like this was pretty interesting, pretty uh, unique. And I think that that may be part of why this film holds such a place for so many people, not only because it was early, but because it was so different in the way it was presented. So the movie was released in 1971, but it was actually a sequel, and a lot of people don't know that. The original movie in the series, there are four movies in the Billy Jack series, the first one being The Born Losers from 1968, which really doesn't have any martial arts. It's about the same character, Billy Jack, taking on a motorcycle gang that was modeled after the Hells Angels. And he did that because he was trying to get the Billy Jack screenplay produced, but people weren't interested in it at the time. And so motorcycle gang violence was really popular in culture at that time. So we made The Born Losers and took the money from that to get the screenplay and the influence that he needed for getting Billy Jack done. There was even talk of a TV series for Billy Jack, but of course that never happened. And there were some other Billy Jack films that we'll talk about as we get further in that never came out, strange titles, strange plots. And the common theme through all of them was, of course, Tom Laughlin, who was a star and the writer or co-writer of all of these films. And he has some pretty strong political views and anti-war sentiments. And of course, you can see those themes in Billy Jack and throughout the movies, the idea of someone using violence to achieve peace. And of course, you know, that's a bit of a contradiction. And that was a contradiction that the critics saw as well. And some of them did not respond to that contradiction. Now, part of the reason that Laughlin wanted to get Billy Jack produced. And part of the reason that he had such trouble back in 1954 when he started that process was that the focal point of the movie was around the way Native Americans were being treated during the civil rights movement. And it was exposing something that some people didn't really want to have out there. It, you know, it was not uh, a good thing that was happening uh, to be non-articulate. The studios were just generally scared of the theme. Now, his wife, Tom Laughlin's wife, grew up on a reservation, and a lot of his dedication to that cause of exposing that and preventing the violence or, or trying to have a hand in stopping that was because of the stories that she told him, the things that she saw while she was there. And it really became a mission for him. Filming on the movie started in 1969. It was shot in California, Arizona, and New Mexico. But there were three different production houses that got involved with the financing and the distribution. And it just became a mess. It wasn't released until 1971. And when it was, it was only a test run. They didn't have it in a ton of theaters. It didn't build any momentum. And by their definition, it flopped. It brought in $6 million. 
and that wasn't enough to get a full national release, so they pulled the movie. Tom Laughlin felt really strongly about the movie. He thought it would do very well with a big release, and so he sued the studio and put in the money, basically, that he had received from the first piece, got the distribution rights back, and oversaw a national release on his own. And of course, it was incredibly successful at that point in 1973, and it earned over $60 million at that time. Uh, the total box office take, uh, at least according to IMDb now, is almost $100 million. If we take that $60 million, we adjust it for inflation, it's actually the 53rd highest grossing film of all time. And even unadjusted at $60 million, it beats out some films that we think of as being martial arts box office successes, Hero, The Forbidden Kingdom, and plenty of others. Of course, you know, you can make an argument that it's not a martial arts film. I think it is. A lot of the people that have mentioned it on the show, of course, think it is. Because it is, you know, it presents martial arts as a focal point to the story. But if you look at a lot of lists of martial arts films, you're not going to see Billy Jack on there. The character of Billy Jack is a veteran, half Navajo, who learned Hapkido during his time in Vietnam. And of course, played by Tom Laughlin, who did have some martial arts experience. And he had a pretty solid film and movie career. And he was acting for more than 30 years. His final film, The Return of Billy Jack, which would have been the fifth in the series, was never finished because he suffered a head injury during filming. And that movie had kind of an interesting plot, uh, still with Billy Jack in the center, trying to save people. He would have been 55 during filming, but it was about Billy Jack going to New York and taking on a ring of child pornographers. There's a little bit of footage circulating on the internet, but nothing in full for for people and uh, it looks like plenty of people have tried to get the footage for that film release but it hasn't happened now unfortunately laughlin died of pneumonia in 2013 he was 82 and he had actually run for president three different times in 1992 2004 and 2008 and he'd run as both republican and democrat now the female lead in billy jack was played by tom laughlin's wife dolores she played Jean. And she was actually really reluctant to get on screen, but she did because the original actress quit. And she must have done a really good job, or I mean, we know she did a good job, but uh, even in at least some critics' eyes, because Marlon Brando, while watching the movie, stood up in a crowded theater after the scene where Jean told Cindy about Bernard attacking her. And he said, this is a quote, this performance is the yardstick by which all actors should judge themselves. Of course, Marlon Brando being a rather accomplished actor in his own right, so that's quite the compliment. Brando wasn't the only celebrity that loved the film. Elvis watched it nine different times. When we think about iconic scenes from the movie, the one that comes to my mind and a lot of people is the scene where Billy Jack kicks the sheriff in the head and he says the really famous line, I'm going to take this right foot and I'm going to whop you on that side of your face. Now, while Tom Laughlin had a great deal of martial arts training, and that was really important to him, he wanted to make sure that the character of Billy Jack was authentic. If he was going to portray martial arts, he wanted to do it right. Despite all that, he didn't have the skill to actually pull off that kick without injuring the actor. So they brought in somebody else. Laughlin's Hapkido instructor, Master Bong Su Han, who, if you don't know that name, is often referred to as the father of Hapkido here in America. And we're going to put a link to him in the show notes because he's actually quite an iconic person in the history of Korean martial arts. Now, I said before that unfinished fifth film, The Return of Billy Jack, as Tom Laughlin tried to get funding for it, he kept trying for about a decade uh, through the 90s to try and get that film produced. He kept renaming it. And some of these names got kind of silly. So we'll go through them. Um, so of course it started off the return of Billy Jack, but then it became Billy Jack's crusade to end the war in Iraq and restore America to its moral purpose. And after that, it was Billy Jack's moral revolution, Billy Jack for president. That's one, one title. And then finally, Billy Jack and Jean. Now, according to Laughlin, he intended the picture to be, uh, 
new genre of film. That's a quote. And he really wanted it to focus on social commentary, bringing in politics, religion, psychology. And the movie was going to culminate in a debate between Billy Jack and then President George W. Bush. And no, they weren't going to bring the president on as an actor. They were going to do all that through computer manipulation of uh, speeches that had been videoed. In 2009, Laughlin released some scenes and plot details of the film on his website. And uh, despite a significant amount of effort, I cannot find that footage. Uh, if anyone out there has it, please let us know. Really want to link that. Sounds great. So what do you think of the movie? If you haven't seen it, you've got to go see it. You've, you've got to get it. It's available. Uh, there are online places to rent it and stream it. It's a tremendous movie. And if I, I'm going to be really blunt, if you consider yourself a martial artist, this is one of a handful of films that you've just got to see. Yeah, it's kind of hokey, especially by today's standards, but it's hokey in a really different way from other martial arts films. There's an actual plot here. It isn't always delivered well. The acting isn't always great, but rather than there being no attempt at making a cohesive movie and just kind of having some fight scenes strung together with some poor dubbing over it, which was typical of the martial arts films of the time, this was an attempt of, and I would say really the first American martial arts film. So check it out and let us know what you think. What's your opinion on the movie? How many times have you seen it? Are you a fan? Are you an anti-fan? Whatever your thoughts, you can get to us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, always with the username Whistlekick. Or you can leave a comment on the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, or you can leave us a comment on YouTube. Now, if there's someone that you really think should hear this episode, maybe a fan of the movie or somebody that you think really needs to check it out, please go ahead, share it with them. You guys have been doing a great job helping us out, spreading the show, and we're growing. And that's because of you and really, really appreciate it. Now, if you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a Thursday show topic, go ahead, reach out to us, fill out the form on the website, email us, info at whistlekick.com, whatever works best for you. You can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com, and our sparring gear is also readily available on Amazon. Now, that's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Oh, before you go, you guys are probably getting used to this. We drop in this commercial at the end for the Martial Arts Weekend. July 8th, 9th, and 10th here in Vermont. It's going to be an amazing event. We've got instructors from all over the Northeast and even from down South coming up to teach. You'll have plenty of opportunities to learn different martial arts from different martial artists. These same instructors are going to be taking sessions when they're not teaching. It's going to be a big community event. We're really looking forward to it. That's that. If you want to learn more, and of course you do, that's Martial Arts Weekend. Dot com. Hope to see you there. Have a great day.